Pasta 101 basics. Okay, we're gonna move slightly further to this other stove where I have my pasta pot that comes with its own strainer. These are the best pots. You can find them in all the large department stores. They sell them now. And notice, the strainer is already here. So you don't waste you don't waste the pasta water that's already boiling. The mm. hardest thing to do is to get the water boiling and to keep it consistently boiling because the pasta needs to be added into the water when it is boiling vigorously. So that's rule number one, okay? Next is you need to salt the pasta water. I mean, you need to salt the water. Notice, this is a handful of sea salt. Oh, wow. wow. <laughs> That's a lot, oh. right? Yeah. <laughs> Two. Oh. <laughs> this is the one thing that many people overlook, okay? I'll tell you, no matter how delicious your sauce is, if your pasta water doesn't have enough flavor, your pasta doesn't taste like anything, okay? So uh, let me explain. Um, it kind of needs to taste like the ocean, okay? Oh. The fla because then the flavor of the pasta water is what will give your pasta by itself flavor already, even without the flavor of your sauce, mm -hmm. okay? Just a little more for good measure. <laughs> and let's put the lid back so that it boils more vigorously. Okay, tip number three. So that was, the water needs to be boiling vigorously. You need to salt it and put flavor in the pasta water. Then let me explain a little bit uh, about the actual pasta. Um, Italian cooking is actually all about proportion, right? If you have um, Italian pizza, for example, it will never be with the same proportion as, let's say, pizza from Pizza Hut, right? Mm -hmm. Where it's like mounds of cheese, mounds of topping, an Italian pizza has the right proportion between the beautiful crust and just the right amount of cheese, tomato, and ingredients on top. That's the basic Neapolitan style. The same way when you order a panino, a chibo for example, you notice that we never overstuff the sandwiches, right? The panini is like, the proportion is always perfect because you want to taste the beauty of the bread as well as the ingredients so it's never like over the top unlike if you went to new york and ordered a pastrami sandwich at cat's deli where mm -hmm. the filling is this much the bread is just one slice on top and one below it's a totally different mindset a totally different um um way of doing a sandwich the italians love the bread as much as they do the filling mm -hmm. so it's the same for pizza it's the same for pasta, for for the panino, and it's also the same for pasta, right? So the proportion of the pasta to sauce also is very very important. You know how we Filipinos? I remember when we just opened Chibo, we always got like a lot of complaints from our guests who said, "Bakit naman ang konti lang ng sahog ng bolognese niyo?" So we, I, I had to like kind of be a little bit adamant about explaining that really we want you to taste the beauty of the Italian pasta as well as the sauce. It should mm -hmm. never over, the sauce should never overwhelm the pasta because the pasta on its own already has beautiful flavor. Okay, so we're using um, a really great brand, the Checo. Um, I was uh, very lucky to visit their factory in, in Italy and we, we started um, with Chibo using the Checo. We never changed. And we never compromised because um, I saw how it's made. And all of the Checo pasta is shaped with a bronze um, stamp. 
So when they make spaghetti, it's a it's a bronze uh, shaper that cuts the the spaghetti. Uh, to make the penne, they use a bronze shaper to to cut the penne. And if you notice, if you think about bronze as a metal, it's actually a little bit porous and warm, as opposed to using plastic stamps for shaping pasta. Other brands use um, plastic. I won't mention names, um, but. Mm -hmm. The reason why the bronze stamp for shaping pasta is so much better is because it allows the pasta to still have texture on the outside. So if you feel the, the a strand of the spaghetti of the Checo, you can feel that it's a little bit rough and coarse because that coarseness is what allows the pasta, the, the sauce to actually stick to your to your noodles, to the pasta. So it's the same with this penne. Um, it's also, and, and you can see that the color of the flower, of the semolina flower, um, is is um, very vividly yellow, because at the checo, when the flower, the, the raw flower arrives, they actually mill it in their plant, and it mixes with the water from the mountain, um, in the plant itself. They don't pre-grind the flower. They don't pre-process um, the flower. They do it in the plant and then mix it with the spring water that comes from the mountain. So sometimes I feel that it's a little bit pricier, but we invest in it because we realize that the quality of the pasta um, dish comes out much better when you use good quality pasta. Flavor is also different. And that's why we're very, very picky about the brand that we use. So, notice the pasta water is boiling vigorously, okay? We got that on the other camera. Yeah. We're putting a half a kilo bag. And what you need to do is just twirl the penne or whatever pasta you're using. If it's spaghetti, make sure you don't break it because it's unlucky. You just bend it a little and let it um, soften in the water. And it, when, once you put the pasta in, the temperature of the water actually drops. So you need to put the lid back on so that it comes up again to boiling point. What happens is the, the pasta itself has kind of like a film um, of, uh, of starch on the outside. And when you put that in the boiling water, that's what you need to wake up so that it doesn't stick together. And that's why it needs to really be a vigorous boil. Otherwise, when the pasta goes into the water and the water is not boiling enough, it the, the starch on the outside kind of sleeps, mm -hmm. and it doesn't it doesn't bring out a vibrant pasta um, because precisely that starch is kind of like in limbo. Okay, so we're bringing this back up to boiling. And notice you don't need to stir it all the time. You just need to stir it once to wake up that film of, of starch. And then um, eventually once the boiling comes back on, you remove the lid and we'll just continue to cook the pasta. 